So for this question, the grade 8s had a little bit of an advantage over the grade 7s because we've actually used factorial in an assignment that we did. Um, but regardless, they explain to you here what a factorial means. So really, even if you had never heard of a factorial before, you could use the definition to help you. So 2018, sorry, factorial, really just means 2018 times 2017 times 2016 times 2015, blah, 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 all the way down. And 2017 means 2017 factorial means 2017 times 2016 times 2015 times all the way down. Well, very quickly, you can see that the top and bottom of this fraction have some things in common. Like, I could cancel out the 2017s, the 16s, the 15s, and so on, and really all I'm left with is 2018. So if you just read the definition, even if you'd never heard of a factorial before, if you'd read and applied the definition, this is actually quite a straightforward question. So this one is a little bit more complicated. Some of you just actually literally listed off 50 numbers and started crossing ones off, and that's totally fine. Um, one strategy, though, remember, a problem-solving strategy is to solve a simpler problem. So let's look at this as if it just said from 1 to 20 as an example. That just saves me time, really. It doesn't mean you have to. That's just one strategy. So that, But what it allows you to do is look for patterns. Because remember, math is all about patterns. So as soon as I cross out multiples of 2, we know right away that all the even numbers are gone. And then multiples of 3. So anything that I haven't already crossed out that's a multiple of 3 is gone. Multiples of 5. Some of them I've already crossed out. Sevens, elevens, thirteens. And what I'm left with is to see that the only ones that are not crossed off are one, and then any prime number bigger than 13. So notice that one, that one. The 13 gets crossed off because it said multiples of 13. But then anything beyond that, any prime number beyond 13, which begins at 17, will not get crossed off. So right away, now I've realized, when I look at this question, it's really just asking me, what are the prime numbers higher than 13 plus including 1? And so really, you just have to realize you've got 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, uh, 43, sorry, 41, 43, 47, and then 1, which wasn't crossed out, and altogether that leaves you with 10 numbers. Again, you could have listed all 50. This is just a little bit faster in terms of um, finding a pattern and then quickly realizing how you can apply that pattern and extend it to a bigger question. So, so for this one, um, one thing that you notice is that. Um, to get from here to here, you're increasing by 2, then you're increasing by 3, then you're increasing by 4, and so on. So really, you could say my next one, I'm going to be increasing by 5. Oops. So you'll have 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. And then the next one, you're going to be... So in the next row, you're going to be increasing by... Um, Six. So then this one will be 22. And I could keep going, but I'm not going to because what I'm going to notice is so that was up by 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. So now I'm going to go up by 7. And then I'm going to go up by 8. And then I'm going to go up by 9. Um, uh, yeah, 46. Sorry, brain freeze. Then I'm going to go up by 10. And I'm going to keep that going. I've run out of room there, so I'm just going to extend that. Um, so I'm just going to keep going with the pattern. And if I keep going, so up by 1, 2, 3, 4, et cetera, et cetera. Um, sorry, this is 106. It looks like I wrote 100, but I didn't. I wrote 106. So right away, I'm going to see that 100 is in that row there. Sorry, that 100, not in that row, because that'll be, 100 will be in that row there. And what I could see about that row, so again, 
remember how here I went up by five, then I'm going to go up by six, then up by seven, up by eight, up by nine, up by 10, 11, 12, 13. To get to here, I need to go up by 14. So if 100 is somewhere in this row, and it doesn't really matter where, to get to the directly below it, I'm going to add 14 to it. So that means the number right below is 114. So I didn't actually have to keep writing the whole thing out. What I saw is that I went up by one, up by two, up by three, up by four. I could see that that pattern would just continue. So I found what the number on the right hand side was. I identified where will my hundred occur. And then what do I need to add to get to the row below it? Okay, so this one was quite complicated. Um, they were giving you two right angles to kind of help you a little bit with numbers because you're not allowed a calculator. Um, and I hope that you saw it kind of as a hint to create right angle triangles. And you can create one there, and you can create one there. And what that actually does is it creates a right angle triangle A, E, B. It creates a right angle triangle here that's D, E, and C. It actually creates another one right here where there's a triangle within a triangle that's E, sorry, B, E, C. So that one has, this triangle is within that shape. So what you could do is, because it talks about finding the perimeter of A, B, um, C, D, E. So you need to find um, this side here, this side here, you need to find this side here, you need to find this side, and you need to find this side. So now we can look at those three right angle triangles, and you can see that this one is a um, 2 by 1, 2, 3. So now I'm going to just erase those little X's I made. So this one has, um, from A to B is two units, and from B to E is three units. So right away, based on that picture, I know that that's going to be the square root of 13. And then this one is one unit and two units, and this got cut off here. But if you turn that, you're going to see that this is the root of five. And then this one, one, two, three, is three units and two units, and that's going to be the root of 13. So if we go back and take those sides, which I've now, of course, forgotten, so let me just maybe highlight that side we needed, that side we needed, we needed that side for the shape, we needed that side for the shape, and we needed that side. If we add all those things together, we have root 13 plus 2 plus root 5, plus 1, plus root 13. Now, we haven't done a lot with radicals, but if I have one root 13 and I'm adding another root 13, just like algebra, I have two root 13s, and then I have 2 plus 1 is 3, so it's kind of like algebra a little bit. And so this is what I end up with here. And if I want to, I could write 1 root 5, because in here they had an x, a y, and a z. So right away I can see here is my z. I've written them a little bit out of order. This one's my x and this one's my y. So then it asks you to find what's x plus y plus z. So really like with 1 plus 2 plus 3. And you get 6. So it's based on Pythagorean theorem. It's based on finding right angle triangles. I suspect most of you saw this one and most of you saw this one, but you didn't maybe see that one. Um, so that's how you could approach that question there. So for this one here, um, I think what most of you probably did, I'm not sure, but you had to sort of look at it. Um, if that's that, we know we need to get something with a 60. And same thing here, we know we need to get something with a 60. And what you have to think about is... Um, we have to think about is how we came up with 41. And you have to realize that anything with a 5 is going to give you a multiple of 5. So you're either going to get like 35 or you're going to get 30 or 40. 
So then we need to get, that means this one. So this one's going to be like 35, it's going to be 40, et cetera, et cetera, 25, 30. It's always going to be a multiple of five. So to end up with something that has a one, we know that this one needs to have either a one or a six in the unit. So let's do through some multiples of four. So we've got four, eight, 12, 16. Hey, look, that one has a six in the ones place. So let's give that one a try. That was timesing by four. So this would be dividing by four. That would give us 15. Then let's think here, if that was 16, what would this have to be? 41 minus 16 will give us 25. So we could put the 25 there. That means we multiply that by five. So to go backwards, we're dividing by five and we get 12. So again, if I go backwards, I know that might have been a little confusing. Right away, I recognize that this one is only ever going to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, et cetera, all the way up to multiple, any multiple five. To get 41 as an answer, that means this one, the 4 over A, has to either have a 1 or a 6 because 1 plus a 0 will give me a 1 or 6 plus a 5 will give me a 1. So right away I could create this one and get A is 15 and get B is 12. And then all you had to do was find the sum of 15 plus 12 and get 27. And that was the answer. So it looked really complicated. Um, not really too bad. I actually think it wasn't the most complicated of all of them on it. It's, again, just approaching it from the right strategy. If you have any questions about this, just let me know. Remember, again, it's not about what you get right or wrong. It's about learning some strategies so that the next time you see questions like this, you can approach it in either a more efficient way or a better way, or at least you might even know a way to approach it, whereas maybe when you read it, you didn't know how to do it.